and we're off. All right. Of course, it would have worked better had I got my voice recorder switched on yeah. uh, rather than loading YouTube, which is what I actually did. <laughs> You're trying to find a, a slightly more tuneful version of the William Tell Overture. Yeah, well, no, I thought I thought ours was magnificent, to be honest. I did too. It had a certain personal touch to it. It did. <laughs> This is the BBC. Thank you. Okay, it's not the BBC. It's us. It's us. Hello. The 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 not BBC. The the Bifrost Broadcasting Corporation. We're having that. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Yes. Registered trademark. <laughs> if we remember how to do it. <laughs> and assuming somebody else hasn't done it already. All right. Uh... Frithcast by the bribe. By, by, you say it. <laughs> you say it. I've got coffee. Frithcast by the bride. I think I haven't got bri- coffee. The... You say it. I can't do it. <laughs> try again. Try again. Try Frithcast again. by the Bifrost Broadcasting Corporation. Well done. Hey, hey we got there. Direct from our kitchen campfire. Kitchen campfire. Yes, yes. Definitely authentic campfire. Anyway, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Lovely listeners, welcome to our virtual campfire. Crackle, crackle. Settle in. Crackle, crackle. Mm. Your knees all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, they're warm. Okay. I'm warming them. This is good. The you should have warm knees. The Havamal tells I'll, us so. Allah Havamal. Yes. Allah Havamal. Mm. Yes, um, I'm, I'm well. Are you well? I'm doing jolly well, thank you very much. Good, good. Listen welcome to, well. to um, yeah, I, I should think. Yeah, see, they are. Good. Look, I hope that's so. nice. Welcome to Frithcast number 28. 28. 28. 28. So before we get started on... Just seems like yesterday, doesn't it? What does? When we started doing this. It was yesterday. No, I mean Frithcast as a whole, not this episode. Oh, right. Okay. Anyway, sorry, go on. Frithcast tonight is brought to you by the letter... B. B? Yes. Oh, that's thrown my, my understanding of the plan. What was your plan? I thought we were beginning with the letter A in its form of F. <laughs> Which we're going to play in the key of G. <laughs> <laughs> sharply now, sharply. Oh, no, I'm a bit flat tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Welcome to today's Frithcast episode 28. I'm Suzanne, I'm one of the UK ambassadors for TAC, which is the Asatru community. And I'm Kate, and I'm not any of those things. Um, I'm just a druid who happens to live here. That's good. Celebrated druidy thing. Yay. Fear the... Fear the yay. I'm hearing the the enthusiasm there. Yeah. It's a lovely sight to see, listeners. I really wish you could see this with me. <laughs> I'm doing fearsome. Fearsome. I can see, yeah. Wilderness. It's like the. It's like it's like the wild is is just is barely constrained here, and it, you know at any moment it could just. Um, for those of you who can't see what's going on, my wife is currently doing an impression of a T Rex eating with chopsticks. <laughs> Can't reach otherwise. They're very long chopsticks. They are. Very short, the hands. Okay. <sighs> now we've got that over and done with. <laughs> Shall we start on today's topic? Okay. Okay. What are we talking about tonight? Well, today I thought we would talk about 
one of the subjects that we haven't really touched on that much, mm -hmm. and that's looking at runes. Okay. Now, to be fair, we could do the next hundred episodes on runes and still not really get into it. You know, we could just about have got a fairly good understanding, but we're not going to do the next hundred episodes on runes because reasons. Because, <clears throat> yeah, well, maybe, you know, maybe if, if, if we decide it, things need expanding on, yes, we can come yeah, back to you know, later, but we thought we'd do our, for now, our usual sort of meander about and geek foo and stuff. Yeah. So, you probably are familiar with the fact that these these things called runes. Letters. Letters. Like letters. Kind of like letters, but like letters plus. Symbolic glyphs. Also symbolic glyphs, yes. Ideograms? Yeah, in some cases, they don't really all ideogram, to be honest. Okay. So what I'd like to do today is have a look at the very first rune. Mm -hmm. The first rune in the sequence, and you'll think, well, if there's a sequence, how many are there? The, the sequence that I'm talking about is the sequence of 24, which is the Elder Futhark. So there's also a younger Futhark, and there are there's an Anglo-Saxon Futhark, and there are a couple of variations on pretty much all of them okay. that make things a bit complicated. But we're just going to look at the very first room tonight. I'm just going to throw in. Uh, I'm, I'm sure our listeners chicken are probably chicken. Ah! I'm sure our listeners are probably aware. Um, but I just for my own benefit, if nothing else, I throw in Futhark is so-called because it is a representation of the first few letters of that yes. alphabet, as alphabet is so-called because it's a representation of the first two letters of... In Greek. That alphabet. Yes. Alpha, beta. Alpha, beta, and so... alphabet in Hebrew. In Hebrew. Yeah, we're going to go into a bit of Hebrew later. Okay. But so, you're right, the word alphabet comes from alpha, beta, which is the Greek... The word Futhark comes from the first six letters, and if you write it out, you may think, hang on a minute, there's seven. And they're counting the TH sound, the th, as one letter. So the first letter for our purposes tonight will, of course, be F. F. Yes, so the first... Sounds like steam escaping. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> um, so... Another concept that you may or may not be familiar with is the rune poems. And runes very quickly can be used for a multitude of different things. They can be used to write things out, so they can be used as a written system. Mm -hmm. They can also be used as an oracular system. They can have... For divination. For divination, for oracular purposes, for introspection. They can also be marked onto object as a single rune so as a single letter that doesn't make any sense okay. you just write the letter T on something and it's like oh you've written a T on it no it's the, there's something else attached to it they're deliberately using that rune in that place on that object it's a something else so each of the runes has a concept attached to them as well as a phonetic sound All right. and the reason we know where these concepts come from is from a series of documents called the Rune Poems. And the Rune Poems have commonly one verse per rune that describes their meaning. So if I read you the first verse of each Rune Poem, you'll see that the concept is a similar one that runs through it. So we're not talking about the letter F here, we're talking about the concept that's attached to it. Right. That particular symbol. Um, the first poem is Wealth is a comfort to everyone, yet each must give freely if he will glory in heaven. And you might be balking at that word, but there's a reason why it's in there. Mm. It's the Anglo-Saxon rune poem, and the people who are writing this down are Christian, so they're taking the concepts that they have in that language and translating it to concepts that they understand that yeah. have worth for them. You also got things like Money may console you, though to get any credit you have to give it away. And the Norwegian Rhone poem, which is a little bit on the darker side, wealth causes strife amongst kingsmen, the wolf lurks in the forest. Mm. End of verse. So it's not too big a step that if wealth causes strife amongst kingsmen, it's because it's not being distributed fairly or there's a it's being hoarded. So the wolf lurking in the forest is envy or greed, things that would have been catastrophic to a close-knit community. Yeah. 
So they all they all <coughs> sort of they all sort of have this theme of not just describing wealth, you know, whether that's money or, or, or whatever, but not only describing wealth but also describing the necessity of treating it responsibly. Yes. That it's not just for you to have all the money. No. It needs to be used <clears throat> properly. Yes. I mean I think we mentioned in one of our previous episodes we've looked at this responsibility for reciprocity mm. Mm. and being able to make sure that the wealth in your community doesn't just sit in one place at the top and become stagnant but is shared amongst people that's one of the ways you form bonds of friendship yeah not to mention keeping your society's I want to say economy I mean we're talking about well, yeah. know, little towns and settlements and what have you but you know even so you keep the economy going yeah. by not hoarding the wealth and keeping it in one place and at the risk of <clears throat> just throwing this in and, and, and being totally inappropriate it's not dissimilar. I mean, you you mentioned that it was um, this was this was translated by by Christians. The first one was yeah, the, the first Anglo-Saxon one. I mean, to be honest, it's not that far away from the the, the, the warning in their text mm. that the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes, you know, yeah. a, a different. A lot of people a lot of people will repeat that as money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say that at all. It says the love of it. It's, you know, so if, if you have need of it, yeah, and you focus on it to the exclusion of everything else, mm-hmm. yeah. So, money in Viking society, you do have coinage, but you generally have a, a barter or trade system. Mm. And where you end up with coinage, you end up with uh, a lot of hordes have Arabic coins in them. Okay, and they also have things like hack silver, where they've taken silver arm rings or rings or silver wire and they've done it and they've cut it up into pieces mm. and you're thinking well why have they done that it's because they're on a merchant system so you ha- you find merchant scales like the sig tuna box where they would measure silver out against the amount of goods that you wanted yeah so you would have this barter and trade system this rune is talking about that but it's also talking about cows 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 so this is cows as a domestic animal, this is cows as a measure of your status and worth. You have more cows, you're richer. You have more cows, you're richer. It's one of the ways they measure worth. Okay. Um, and it's worth gained through hard work because a cow does not look after itself. No. I know, I, <clears throat> I can vouch for this. Yes. They need, you know, library books, foot rubs, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Really, have to have their ears combed every now and then. Oh yeah, no. Um, So, I've got a question for you, lovely listeners, to do with wealth. Do you measure success solely by the acquisition of material wealth? How do you define success, and how do you personally define wealth? There are no right and wrong answers. We are not going to teach you how to heathen, because there isn't a right way and a wrong way to heathen. There just are many different ways to heathen. Mm. So how do you measure success? Is success for you dependent on material wealth? And, you know, a, a bank account with lots of zeros and a one at the front, not lots of zeros and one at the end, because that could be just embarrassing. But how do you define what wealth is? How do you define, how do you measure success? Mm. Cattle are one of the ways that this society measures wealth, measures success. In an agrarian society. <clears throat> In an agrarian society. We've even got the Havamal mentioning cows. Cattle, they, they, there's two verses in the Havamal that start, cattle die, kindred die. Yes. But it's mentioning cattle specifically. Mm. It's not mentioning... And first. Rabbits and sheep or anything else. Mm. It's cattle straight away yeah and they're in there before your kindred is um if you look at other alphabets the word for cattle or cow or the letter for representing those is also the very first letter in the hebrew alphabet the greek alphabet and the gothic alphabet it's hugely hugely important but we don't measure our worth now by cows no no. Sorry, I was just it just <clears throat> cropped in my head when you said cattle die, kindred die. There is an expression which I have heard used uh, kindred and kind. 
Mm. Kind meaning your livestock, your cattle. Yes. Um, and when somebody's referring to, you know, the whole the whole group of you, you would say kindred and kind because it's 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 you and your I've just realised it, it, it's basically talking about the same thing. It's you mm. and your possessions. It's not the only society that values the wealth that's inherent in cattle. You've got, if you look at the Irish histories and legends, you've got the cattle raids. They're huge in Irish history. Massive amount of cattle raids. Mm. If you look at Zoroastrianism, one holy, one whole holy book is dedicated to a conversation between the group soul of domesticated cattle and Ahura Mazda, the deity of light, where the group soul of the domesticated cattle is asking the deity of light where they might find a good keeper, a good shepherd, somebody who will look after them. A suitable, yeah, yeah. A suitable person. Somebody who's worthy of them. Somebody who's worthy of them. And if you take the Phoenician alphabet, it might be a symbol that you'll recognise. You take their letter A, mm -hmm. and if you write a capital letter A out on a piece of paper and you turn it upside down, you're looking at a cow's face with horns. And the Phoenician And the Phoenician a. symbol for cattle and their letter A, mm. which we have now turned upside down. The Romans just inverted it. <clears throat> the Romans inverted it. Yeah. And we now use the Roman alphabet, even though we're not writing Latin anymore, we still use the Roman alphabet and we use a capital letter A. So it's our first letter based on the Phoenician first letter, based on an ideogram, a picture picture of a, of cow. a cow and Feo the first rune is also a picture of a cow but if you look at it you're thinking well how is that a picture of a cow like a letter A is a picture of a cow hmm. if you turn a cow's head sideways you have two horns okay and you then have a, a vertical line which is symbolizing the yoke because it's domesticated cattle okay so you have a yoke with the head of the cow poking through and the two horns. This is your letter, your first rune fail. It's still a cow. And it's still a cow. So we measure wealth in different ways now. We look at bank accounts, we look at jobs, we look at investments, we look at cars, we look at mortgages. These are all ways that we measure wealth. Mm. Material wealth. Your stock portfolio. Your stock portfolio. I don't so, know what that is. It's just I've heard people talk about it. <laughs> okay. So your your stock portfolio in the modern age now now is things like your car, yeah. your skills of worth that somebody might hire you for, your inherent material wealth that you have about you. Yeah. So I tend to look at this rune as the equivalent of a two-ton mooing bank account. <laughs> this is the image that I have in my head when I'm looking at this. If we look at the English word fee, F-E-E, -E, it's a term for an expected payment. Yes. It comes from fee. Oh, wow. Okay. If you look at Jack and the Beanstalk... The giant sits there and goes... Oh, you're kidding me! Feel... File... Fo... Really? Foam... Really? Yeah. Well, really, but... Nice! You know, it'd be nice. I never knew that. I, I suppose it makes sense. You I know, mean, it's... he's... I smell the blood of an Englishman. Yeah. He's finding his whole thing is Jack is going up to steal his wealth. Yeah. Rune fail. Wow. So he's chanting Galda to keep his wealth safe. This isn't a story we teach kids. Well, no. Most, <laughs> most, most fairy stories aren't. Yes. Really, are they? Most fairy stories are, don't do this, it's not going to end well. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the, that's a warning, that's a UPG part. I don't have any evidence uh, that proves that that is the case but that is a link that I understand my yeah. personal only link right, in well, this happy to go with that and if you look at the Norse creation myth what animal is it that licks the first man out of the ice I'm gonna take a wild stab in the dark and say it's a cow 
Out Humla. Who's sorry? What? Out Humla. Out hum- Okay. Out Humla, the cow. Yes. Yes. The cow. So she's in the, the Gingwa Gap, mm-hmm. and she licks the ice and releases Buri, mm. whose progeny then develop the creation of the worlds. But it's a cow. Okay. Right at the beginning. The cosmic cow. The cosmic cow. Nice. So cows and wealth and signifiers and markers of wealth are all the way through this. So when I'm thinking about this rune and I'm thinking about the oracular version, these are the things that are coming into my head. Mm. All these connections with value, with material goods, with wealth, with the caution that you need to distribute it fairly. Yeah. It doesn't mean living an entirely austere life. It means ensuring that you keep monies moving through a society. Yeah. You don't hoard it in a bank account for no reason. It only works if it's moving. It's like, it's like um, mm-hmm. electricity. It only works if it's moving. It only works if or it's moving. energy of any sort, As it would have done in a society then, it's one of the things. For me, you know, things come from the gods to man to the earth. To man, to the gods, mm. to man, to the earth, to man, to gods, to the gods, to the earth, to man, to the gods, to the earth, to man. So it's this constant reciprocity, this constant conversation, this constant movement of things of value. A balance and flow. A balance and flow. You see, and that ties into so many other things as well. It does, it does, but I'm going to try and keep it on this first rune. Okay. So. It goes to show how you, how you can wander, though, once you get started. Oh, yes. It's like TV tropes. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Go Don't to TV it. tropes and see how long do it takes you to it. max out the number of tabs oh, on your browser can, God, your browser do can not handle. Do it. Take it from us. The number is finite. <laughs> so this is a quick zoom around. Mm-hmm. The very first rune in the sequence. As always, we will put some links in the description. At some point, we will probably touch on the runes again. Uh-huh. And we might even choose another rune to look at in more detail, but we certainly will be covering other topics and other things through the next following podcasts. Cool. As always, if you would like to give us a comment or a question or anything of that ilk, if you would like to suggest a topic that you'd like us to consider for a future Frithcast, See how well I did that without losing my teeth. That was fabulous. So, yeah. Then you are very welcome to send us a message, drop us a comment, find us on Facebook, find us on Messenger. It's all good. Mm. How you do that? I'm Suzanne Martin. You can find me on Facebook under Suzanne Martin, or you can find me on Twitter at Suzanne Tac T A C. And if you want to find me for any reason, um, you can. Uh, look at my website at glassrain.net. I say website, it's it's a page with some words on it. Um, a good website, but my, yeah. <laughs> but my um, the social media profiles are linked from there. Awesome. So, be awesome, lovely listeners, and we will talk to you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. You eat quite fierce sometimes, aren't you? Oh, ta. <laughs> <laughs>